Okay, so we're going to start with UV mapping. And the first thing we're going to do is the uh, beer bottle label. Make it easy. We can dip our toes into UV mapping and then go with the bottle cap and then eventually the uh, six-pack case itself. The first thing to know about UV mapping is that UV doesn't stand for anything. It's not an acronym. It's just another set of coordinates uh, like X, Y, and Z, but they just it's important to just make a distinction between X, Y, and Z in 3D space and then the coordinates that you use in texture mapping. Instead of doing X, Y, or Z for texturing, they just decided to, to call it UV. And it, sometimes it's called UVW as well, where W is the third dimension like Z is. So typically, it's just two dimensions, U and V, and I've got an example here from the six pack that we're gonna be making later. This is an old six pack that I made, and what I did just to delineate all the different sections that, we, that could be textured, I set them as colors. And this might not look like very much right now, but if we go into Photoshop where this texture map is laid out you can see how these are our different spots of color in a gray image and that doesn't look like it much either except when I turn on the UV map mesh layer now this will start to make more sense if I turn these colors off so here is actually how this six pack all the polygons in the six pack are laid out in a flat image and these are all just the, the uh, unseen or you know kind of useless polygons inside the whole model where these are all the important parts of the model that need to have uh, textures and images placed on them so if we go back to cinema you can see how these areas have been color coded basically so it's easier to see what uh, what parts go where on the 3D object. And so we're going to be doing that later for the six-pack case. And that's going to end up becoming a lot of fun because that's really where uh, you know a lot of the design and the excitement and the polish come together uh, after UV mapping has been done. And so we're going to go into, right now, just the bottle itself to make it really easy. And one important thing to remember about UV mapping is that uh, generated objects like lofts or extrudes or lathes, uh, they don't uh, work for UV mapping. So these all have to be made into uh, polygon objects. And like we've done before, I'm just going to make a copy of this and turn it off in case we ever have to go back to uh, the generated beer bottle and label and bottle cap. So from there um, I'm going to hit C on the bottle cap make that a, a polygon object and it's got these two caps so we can do that trick where we connect objects and delete and then go to point mode highlight all the points, right click and do optimize. Same with the beer bottle, hit C on that. That should be all set up, that should be all done because it was a lathe object, there's no caps per se. But just in case, I'm gonna select all the points and optimize that as well. And then for the beer label itself, which is just the cylinder with no caps on it basically do the same thing and there it is as a polygon object since there's no caps it is just that one object so that's great so what we're gonna do now is take this object into body paint now body paint is uh, cinema 40s answer to UV mapping and it's not like a separate program, it's, it's really just kind of like a separate uh, layout of windows and, and buttons and everything. So it can be found in this layout dropdown where typically it says startup and you can find different 
pre-made layouts for different types of uh, 3D needs. One of them is BP UV Edit. So that stands for Body Paint UV Edit. So we select that. The layout changes and we see a 3D window and then this is where the texture window actually takes place once it's been made. And the way to do that is to make sure that the beer label object has been selected and we're going to use this button right here called the paint setup wizard and what that does is it automatically creates a texture file and it does its best attempt at laying out the polygons flat so you could use them in Photoshop and by default it it selects all the objects in the scene to to make a texture file for which is not what we want to do we're going to deselect all of them and just make sure that the if we expand this we make sure that the beer label object is is selected so just that one hit next these are all fine they work really well for defaults don't worry about it hit next and then here is the this is the pixel size of that beer label and I like because this is going to be pretty detailed we might as well make it really high quality I'm going to double this and make it 2048 and it says to create channels these are all material channels uh, we can go into that later color is fine is the, is the first one to be made we can make these on our own later so don't worry about having them checked right now so I hit finish it does a little wizarding and then you hit close and it gives you this and you can't see anything right now but you have this gray which matches this and actually if you can see I can actually paint on this label if I wanted to and you can see how it updates live on the UV map but that's not what we want to do it's weird to, to not be able to see anything on this but still see things show up as we paint on it and that's because the UV mesh hasn't been displayed and there is a drop down right here it says UV mesh and right here it says show UV mesh so if we select that we can see the actual uh, UV mesh that the cinema attempted to create for our map and what it really is right now is it's just four sections of this cylinder laid flat and that's okay but we might as well make it something that is continuous and don't have to worry about these gaps right here which is when you paint on it see you can see if I paint on it right here where is this right now it, it started it ended right here and then this is somewhere and it disappeared on this label that's because that section is back here if I started right here you know they're not in sequential order and there's a gap in between them and so that's these aren't <clears throat> this is not an ideal uh, UV map which is not that hard to, to fix we can make our own UV map um, with just a few clicks so the first thing to do is as you can see up here there are uh, the same kind of modes that are in the normal layout object polygon line and point mode and there's also these other ones too uh, texture mode UV points and UV polygons mode so this is if you select this mode it's it's possible to go into live selection right here and actually select these uh, polygons but they're not 3D polygons, these are UV polygons. If I was going to go in the polygon mode, you can see how it looked different. But it's also nice because in even in 3D polygon mode, if I select some polygons, they still get highlighted in here as uh, UV polygons as well. So what I want to do is go into line mode. And the thing that's useful for cinema and body paint to make a make a continuous um, a continuous UV map is to provide a seam for it to cut the uh, 3D object apart and that'll make sense in a second so I'm gonna 
select this line right here on the object. What that's going to do is because this is 3D and we have to map it onto a two-dimensional surface, we have to find some way to cut it and lay it flat. And so I'm going to select this line right here. This is going to become the seam where this object is cut and then laid flat on this UV map. And by doing that, I'm going to go right here in UV mapping in a relax UV tab and there's a see there's this already selected is checked cut selected edges so there's an edge selected and it says cut selected edges so if I just hit apply it does that which makes sense because it's actually a polygon selection that hadn't been deselected so if we go back to line mode and hit relax UV and do apply, it does this. Which obviously is not ideal. And that's because the projection, one easy way to start laying out a UV map is to project this through the object onto this flat surface using one of these different ways. And the one I like to use to start is frontal. Now you can see frontal means where I'm looking right now, where the camera is looking right now. So if I move this and hit frontal again, it'll change. If I zoom out, hit frontal again, it'll change. So it's looking at where you're actually looking in the 3D perspective and it projects that 3D object onto this map using that way. So if we do frontal like that, it obviously looks bad right now. This is not what we want, but it gets it's a good start because once we can project this onto this UV map, we can then relax the UVs. But luckily, this is a cylinder object, and there is a line to cut it apart, set up, and all we have to do is use this projection of cylinder because this is a cylinder. Now once I hit that button, look what happens. It does it automatically. It's perfect. Perfectly spaced grid, perfectly proportionate squares, and we now have a beer label texture. And the line that we selected right here is the seam it goes from so if I paint this you can see how it actually goes like that so this and this are the same line right here. So now we are set. This is a perfect beer label texture. Next thing to do is go to File and Save Texture As. Because what you want to do, why we're not why we're not selecting Save Texture, which we could do, but it doesn't. It doesn't really provide you with a file to use in Photoshop. So what we need to do is save texture as, and you can save the file as a TIFF with PSD layers. I'm not really a fan of that. I like to do a PSD itself, just a Photoshop file. And I hit OK, and then it asks you where to save it. So I'm going to save it right here. I'm going to call this. Beer label, texture, hit save. So now it's saved as a file. One thing we want to do too, before we bring it into Photoshop, is if we go to layer, this drop down right here, and we have this right here, create UV mesh layer. Now what that does is, 
it creates a Photoshop layer on that file of the UV mesh. So we can use that for reference and we can turn it on and off too. So now I now we have it saved, I can hit save texture right there and it'll have saved that UV mesh layer on the Photoshop file. So now if we bring this in to Photoshop, let me go to open and go to where we saved it. So it did save this, but we don't need it. It has the Photoshop file saved and you can see it has a UV mesh layer. And so we hit open and right there is our UV map of the beer label. So the first thing we can do is turn off the UV mesh layer. So this is great for reference. We don't need it though. And just to show you how much fun it is, I'm going to save this. Let's go to Google and let's find a beer label laid flat. This one seems nice. So I'm just going to right click and save this image. Now this is for reference. I'm not going to be stealing this or selling it or anything. This is just to show you how cool it is. I'm going to save that. And then I'm going to go in, into here into Photoshop and if I just hit place, place embedded, I can import an image onto this Photoshop file. So I'm going to add that. I've placed it. I'm going to hold down Shift and Alt and scale this up like that. And then scale it like this. Save it. Now I have this Beer Labels Maker la layer and the UV Mesh layer and the background layer in this Photoshop file. So now when I come back into Cinema, Nothing's going to happen right now because what I have to do is revert this texture back to the saved version, which means the saved version that I just made in Photoshop. So when I say revert texture to saved, it's going to go and look at that file again and then reload the changes that have been made. So we hit that button. Do you really want to revert to the saved version of this texture? Yes, because we just saved it in Photoshop and added new things to it. So I hit yes. Bam. It's there. Now it's not going to show up yet here until I rotate the image and it gets called. There we go. Look at that. That's really when this stuff starts coming together and it gets really fun. Because now you have an image mapped on here and you can add whatever design you want to this image. And we're going to get more into the different channels that Material Editor provides uh, for these materials. This is just a color channel. We can add an alpha channel and do a couple different things because realistically no label is ever really seamless where it comes around all the way on the bottle and doesn't have an end. So we're going to make an alpha channel that's going to cut this out and make it look like a label that's been pasted on to add that little bit of realism. But this is really where it starts to get fun. And body paint, while it might be daunting, there's only a few buttons that you really need to know. So now in the next section, we're gonna do the uh, same thing to the bottle cap. So you have that also as an asset.